So I was flipping through TikTok, and one of my favorite historians, Roy Casagranda, Roy Casagrande, depending on who's typing, was talking about Christmas and Santa Claus and Coca-Cola. And he made a claim that Chris Kringle, who was a Dutch person, was a chimney sweep and a thief. And he could dislocate his shoulders, or he may have been double-jointed, anyways, so that he could fit down the chimney. And then he would take stuff from the house and shimmy back up the chimney, and the chimney would be clean, and so on and so forth. Instead of trying to pronounce this chimney sweep Zwart Piet, or Zwart Piet, his name westernized is Black Piet. So I'm going to use that. So forgive me if I've pronounced Zwart Piet, Zwart, Zwarte Piet, Zwart Piet wrong. I, I apologize. Another note, I'm not doubting or debunking Roy Casagranda. He's a person that has forgotten more about history than I will ever know and probably has a lot of access to material that isn't available on the internet, at least not yet. I just found it interesting that I stumbled upon this really intriguing topic of the Dutch story, a Dutch version, I'm sorry, Dutch folklore about this person, Black Pete, or Chris Kringle, as he was saying, and that it's evolved over the years. So apparently about 125 years ago, Coca-Cola had a big meeting and they wanted to sell their product during the winter seasons. It sold, it was mostly a summer drink. Yeah, it sold during the spring and sometimes during the fall. But because winter was traditionally a time of rest and celebration for the new year coming up, Coca-Cola wanted to take advantage of that. So they got together with their advertising departments and all the big wigs there and came up with an advertising plan. And you get what you get now, which is a watered-down version of Santa Claus. The jolly, red, the jolly man in red with the white hair and beard bringing joy to all the children around the world. So there is little information regarding the origins of Kris Kringle or Zwart Pete or Black Pete or this chimney sweep in terms of him being a thief. There, if you find any information, let me know. Also, I put a link to the Roy Casagrande talk down below. So if you get a chance, check it out. So the exact origins of Black Pete are unclear. He's believed to have evolved from historical figures such as Moorish slaves or chimney sweeps, mostly Italian chimney sweeps. You may have also heard of another character that hangs out with Santa, Krampus. And they seem to be one and the same type of person, just different parts of the globe that have evolved this story. So Zwart Pete's, Black Pete's origins and folklore are as diverse as they are deep, weaving from various cultural threads of European tradition. And while his current form was first codified in Jan Shankman's 1850 book, St. Nicholas and His Servant, where he's depicted as a Moorish servant, the concept of a helper to St. Nicholas predates this text. Throughout Europe, St. Nicholas, who was a 4th century bishop known for his generosity, was often accompanied by a darker, sometimes monstrous figure, Krampus, or someone else, who served various roles from punishing the wicked to aiding in gift-giving. In medieval and modern depictions, this figure could represent the devil, a wild man, or a moor, reflecting medieval European interactions with the Islamic world and broader cultural anxieties about darkness and otherness. The transformation of the devilish companion of St. Nicholas into Black Pete illustrates a fascinating evolution in European folklore. And in many early depictions across various cultures, St. Nicholas was accompanied by this Krampus or Black Pete person, symbolizing the devil or evil. And this character was typically involved in more punitive aspects of the saint's journey, where he would threaten or carry off naughty children. In Black Pete's story, he comes from Spain and he would carry off bad children to Spain to teach them a lesson to water that down. This contrasted sharply with St. Nicholas's benevolent gift giving, and this figure can be seen as a precursor to Black Pete with his dark or blackened face and sometimes terrifying aspects reflecting this malevolent counterpart. And over the centuries, the devilish figure underwent a significant transformation, especially in the Netherlands. The character's role shifted from one of punishment and fear to a more benign, helpful assistant, and Black Pete became less about the threat of punishment and more about aiding Santa Claus and distributing gifts and sweets. And this evolution can be seen as a cultural softening, reflecting changes in societal values where punishment became less central to the festive narrative. Instead, Black Pete's role emphasized joy, magic, and the spirit of giving, aligning with broader cultural shifts toward more inclusive, less punitive celebrations. This transformation from devil to helper not only highlights changes in cultural perceptions, 
of morality and festivity, but also underscores how mythological characters can adapt to reflect the times, turning from figures of fear to symbols of festivity and tradition. The Moorish connection to Black Pete provides a historical context that some traditionalists use to defend the character's portrayal. The Moors were from North Africa and had a significant presence in Spain from the 8th to the 15th century, leaving a lasting cultural impact. And when St. Nicholas, or Santa Claus, is depicted as arriving from Spain with his helper, the idea of a Moorish servant or page becomes a plausible origin story for Black Pete. This interpretation positions Black Pete not as a racial character, but as a representation of the historical and cultural exchange between European and North African traditions, where dark skin could have been a feature of Moorish identity rather than a racial stereotype. The historical background provides a more complex tapestry for understanding Black Pete, the character's evolution in Dutch culture, and particularly his depiction with black face and curly hair and colorful attire, seems to have been influenced by a mix of these early traditions. The Morris servant aspect might reflect the Dutch historical ties with North Africa and the broader fascination with the exotic other. However, the transformation of this figure into Black Pete, specifically with his black face, hints at the influences of minstrel shows that were popular in the 19th century, which used blackface to caricature black people. And this mix of historical folklore and cultural appropriation and 19th century racial stereotypes has led to a the contemporary debate over Black Pete, where his origins in folklore are celebrated for their cultural depth and critiqued for their racial implications. Black Pete plays a pivotal role in the Sinterklaas festivities, which are central to Dutch holiday celebrations and occur primarily on the eve of December 5th, the feast day of St. Nicholas. And during this time, Sinterklaas, depicted as a kindly old bishop, arrives from Spain with his fleet of Black Pete's by steamship. This arrival marks the beginning of the season with children eagerly awaiting the gifts they might receive. Again, you can see where the cultural shift happened. It's not just one person. Now it's a fleet of Black Pete's. Black Pete is both the helper and enforcer in this tradition. While Cinder Claus reads from his book of sins to determine who's been good or bad, Black Pete distributes gingerbread cookies, candy, and small gifts into the shoes left out by the children. And this act of giving is accompanied by playful antics, further embedding the character in the festive atmosphere. But Black Pete's role isn't solely about joy and giving. Traditionally, for those children deemed naughty, Black Pete might give them a road or threaten to take them back to Spain in a sack, though these punitive, ab- though these punitive aspects have become less emphasized over time. This duality of Black Pete, both as a figure of merriment and mild admonishment, serves as a moral lesson. It reinforces societal norms through the promise of rewards or consequence, and his role encapsulates a broader cultural narrative about behavior, community values, and the magic of the holiday season, which makes Black Pete an integral part of the Santa Claus experience deeply embedded in Dutch tradition. Traditionally, Black Pete is portrayed with blackface, makeup, curly wigs, exaggerated red lips, and colorful Renaissance-style attire, and his depiction, it's a depiction that has increasingly become a focal point of racial sensitivity debates. This appearance, reminiscent of minstrel shows, has led critics to argue that Black Pete perpetuates negative racial stereotypes. And while that may be true, it's a heritage, it's historical, it's cultural. Therefore, why not continue to keep it as part of the Dutch culture? The character's look, especially the black face, draws direct comparisons to historical and theatrical portrayals of black people in a derogatory manner sparking significant controversy over whether such a depiction can be culturally acceptable in contemporary society. I understand the argument. The explanation often given for Black Pete's black face is that it's due to soot from climbing down chimneys, as you can see in the pictures that I've provided. This narrative suggests that his dark skin is not indicative of race, but rather an occupational mark. This justification is seen by many, including cultural critics and anti-racism activists, as a post hoc rationalization rather than an original intent behind the character's creation. Critics argue that the soot explanation fails to address the broader implication of the character's features, like the curly black hair, thick lips, and gold hoop earrings, which align more closely with historical caricatures of black people than with the mere act of being covered in chimney soot. History. Critics argue that the soot explanation fails to address the broader implication of the character's features, like the curly black hair, thick lips, and gold hoop earrings, which align more closely with historical caricatures of black people than with the mere act of being covered in chimney soot. 
This discrepancy has fueled the ongoing debate, highlighting a clash between traditional cultural practices and evolving standards of racial sensitivity. Black peat holds a significant place in Dutch culture, intricately woven into the fabric of Santa Claus, which is a highlight of the Dutch holiday season, and this character's roots trace back to folklore and have evolved over centuries, reflecting a mix of historical narratives, including medieval European traditions, colonial influences, and folklore elements where companions of St. Nicholas were often depicted with dark features, symbolizing the devil or otherness. For many in the Netherlands, Black Pete is more than just a character. He represents the cherished tradition, a link to cultural heritage, and embodies a sense of communal joy during the festive season. His role in distributing gifts, sweets, and mild admonishments adds layers of moral lessons and festive spirit, which has made him a beloved figure for generations. The portrayal of Black Pete with the blackface makeup has sparked significant controversy, and critics argue that his depiction perpetuates racial stereotypes, which draw parallels to blackface used historically in minstrel shows to mock African Americans. I don't really think they're African Americans when they're Dutch, but I'm not splitting hairs. This criticism has led to a heated debate over racial sensitivity, cultural appropriation, and the implications of continuing such a tradition, such a tradition, in multi in a multicultural society. On one side, the, tr- the traditionalists defend Black Pete as a mythological figure whose appearance is justified by folklore rather than racial connotations, emphasizing his role as a helper to Sinterklaas over any racial depiction. However, the international and internal criticism has pushed for reevaluations, leading to adaptations like Sooty Pete, where soot rather than blackface is used, aiming to divorce the character from racial implications. This evolution reflects broader societal shifts towards racial equality, yet it also highlights a resistance from those who see these changes as an erosion of cultural identity. The debate is emblematic of a larger cultural and societal tension between tradition and modernity, where the preservation of heritage is weighed against contemporary values of inclusivity and respect for diversity. As the Netherlands navigates this complex issue, Black Pete becomes not just a figure of holiday festivities, He's a symbol of the ongoing dialogue about how societies reconcile their past with the present, reflecting both the challenges and the possibilities of cultural evolution. Black Pete embodies a rich tapestry of Dutch folklore and tradition. It, he's deeply interwoven with the celebration of Sinterklaas, and for generations, this figure has brought joy, magic, and a touch of admonition during the festive season, symbolizing the blend of historical narratives with myth and festivity. But the character also stands at the heart of a significant cultural debate. On one side, Traditionalists argue for the preservation of Black Pete as a mythological figure and not a racial stereotype, emphasizing his role as a helper to Sinterklaas over any racial implications. They point to his origins in medieval companions of St. Nicholas, transforming from punitive to playful and the Moorish connection as cultural justifications. Conversely, critics see Black Pete's portrayal, especially in blackface, as perpetuating racial stereotypes, drawing uncomfortable parallels with historical and theatrical racism. This perspective has gained traction, leading to adaptations like Sooty Pete, aiming to separate the character from racial imagery, reflecting broader societal shifts towards racial sensitivity. The debate over Black Pete encapsulates a broader conversation about cultural heritage versus contemporary values and inclusivity and respect. It's a dialogue not just about a holiday tradition, but about how societies reconcile their past with their present. As the Netherlands navigates this complex issue, Black Pete becomes more than just a festive character. He's a symbol of cultural identity, evolution, and the ongoing quest for understanding and unity in diversity. Also, again, 1950s, 1940s, Coca-Cola. Look at every picture you can of Norman Rockwell's Santa Claus or Coca-Cola's depiction of Santa Claus or basically anybody's depiction of Santa Claus for the majority throughout the last 125 years with few exceptions. It's, It's all watered down. We don't get the real stories behind how these people came about. And Coca-Cola took advantage of a decanonized saint to promote its product. How cool is that? I guess. Anyways, check out Roy Casagrande's lecture on Christmas and St. Nicholas. It's very interesting, as well as all of his other lectures. It's all very, very cool. And that's all I got for today. All right, that's all I've got for today. If you like it, give us a like and subscribe. If you don't like it, that's okay too. Other than that, have a great day.